it's like to be the bad team, to be the sad team behind black and gold. Uh, hey, buddy. So, uh, how you feeling? I've been better. I've been better. Oh, yeah, I bet. I bet. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hey, but I got a fun question for you. Who do you think feels worse right now? Me, down two games in the first round? Or Toronto, tied 1-1 in the first round? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See what I did? Because the first Cause round? They yeah. keep losing. <laughs> they do keep losing. Yeah, it's yeah. you. It's, it's definitely me. You. It's definitely me. Low quality fans of a high quality Bruins team. So high. God, they're so high. They're such a high quality team. I'm telling you that. I believe it. Not a dub. Not a dub. Honestly, not even close to a dub. Not a deserved dub. I don't think the way we played this game, we deserved a dub. There is nothing about this situation that is dub. I also may lose some of you tonight, if the Twitter thing is uh, is going to lead me on to more losses. Basically, a few people, a couple subscribers of the YouTube channel, I see they already uh, unsubscribed, were not super happy with some of my takes on this one. Whoo boy. Um, none of them said anything vulgar, though, which is nice. No one was, like, rude, uh, which is honestly... Honestly, better than usual. So, hang on. <laughs> Rant is going to get the start again. He will not finish this one uh, due to an injury that we're going to talk about. Olmark is going to be back in net for us. A decision I thought was the correct one. We'll see if game three is the same scenario. I want to say one thing real quick. And it's not the like, comment, subscribe, nailed it. It's not that. So, get that out of your head. I watch sports with just so much hope for the best i just do and i'm a negative nelly in a lot of aspects in life but i want to be happy i try i put work in to be happy in life because it has to come from a place of effort for me it has to just in general in life in general and i think a lot of people out there will relate to that where i have to put in the work to be happy because for some reason, the electric meatball in my head doesn't want to be happy. They'd really love to be upset all of the time. But I want to be happy. So when I watch sports and it's stressful and my blood pressure spikes and I get really angry about some stuff, I remind myself I want to be happy. And so I hope for the best. Many of you... Watch sports, expecting the worst so you aren't hurt. Totally get it. That is an equally valid way to watch the game. Don't feel bad about getting emotional and angry at the game. I get it. Just don't give up on the team, man. Just don't do it. You want to be there through the highs and lows. Predicting the team will not win the Stanley Cup means you will be right 95% of the time. There's no pride in that. You chose the easiest, the easiest prediction because you do it every year. Look, I, I made a bracket and I didn't predict the Bruins getting past the series, mostly because I didn't want to curse them. Now I feel like I sort of backwards cursed them. I'm, I'm looping around. Superstitions, man. Just remember, have faith in the team. And once in a while, just let yourself bleed into, you know what? Let me see what it feels like just to hope. Just to believe the team could come back. Hold on to it. Do it the whole game. Until the whistle blows. Or like two minutes are left and we just took another high sticking penalty and, and the game's over. Like that's that I get. I get that. But but at least until that that five minute mark, right? Just believe. And I'm not saying that to insult anyone. I get it. I totally get it. Trust me, I've been there. I've broken patio sets and and TVs and I've I've been angry about this kind of stuff before. I really have. I've Steve dangled it up. I have. But I feel so much better when I just watch the game believing we're going to win until it ends. And when I have that disappointment and it's time to make the video and everything, 
I let out a breath and go, you know what? There's a whole group of people that are going to talk to me about it right now who feel just as shitty and can have that conversation with. So I guess in a weird way, I'm kind of saying thanks, guys, because you help me deal with this better. You really do. That being said, it's a two-zero hole. They won both at home. Good for them. Yes, they absolutely have home ice advantage. I get that. But we win a couple at home, and all of a sudden, it's a three-game series. A bounce. A bounce. Gotta believe. Puck drops. It's another hot start. It's another hot start. Hot potato. 5-1 in shots. We're three minutes in, and Niederreiter goes for tripping. And Ranta just obliterates the two chances we have on the power play. Ah, uh, obliterates them. Seven minutes in. Tony D, interference, 18 seconds into this power play. Right now, the bees feel good. They're buzzing. They're reacting the way you need them to. The power play didn't look amazing. Only a couple chances earlier. But we're back on the power play. It's going to help us build momentum and steam if we have a couple scoring chances. But the puck gets dumped in for a bounce play because Pasta is behind the defense. And it bounces perfectly in front of Ranta, but too close to him. So Ranta comes out of the crease to play the puck just by a bit. And Pasta comes right in on him. Gets right in his grill. And he's trying. The national broadcast said there was no reason for him to be there. I have. You are a national broadcast. Have a little. Where's the. Why is there so much bias? I don't know. He's there to block the clear to hopefully bounce the puck in the net. But that's what he's doing there. No reason to be there. No, he went to the front of the net to block an outlet pass from the goalie. Problem is, what I didn't like about this play, and I will agree with, with the, the commentators on, is he should have pulled up sooner. And he just laid Ranta out. He went right through him. Here's the thing. Ranta was out of the crease. I don't know. The way they called it, I kind of agreed with, honestly. Five-minute major to review the play. Because in, in live time, it looks like Pasta just fucking trucks him. Just boop, right through him. So call the five-minute, review it. Once you call that five-minute, you cannot eliminate all penalties. You have to call at least a minor. They, they drop it down to a minor. It feels like a minor to me, right, in that circumstance. I would rather them call the five minute on something that looks that egregious than them just wave their hands and go, eh, didn't really look that bad, right? So we have to kill a penalty, and we do kill it. We do kill it. It's 4v4, most of it, you know, because we were on the power play, and it kills off our penalty. I get that, but I at least agree with the way that moment went with the referee. There's a lot I won't agree with the referee in tonight, but that I will agree with. The worst part about this, though, is that Ranta, I, he got cut. It looks like the mask cut him, but he goes to the locker room, would not return. He goes down with an injury, which you hate to see, which means Kuchetkov is in. He has three NHL games under his belt, and we did not make him work for this at all spoiler alert seven minutes left we're out shooting them out pressuring them and we are the better team through 13 minutes but all it takes is one shift and it's the stall line the stall line is pressuring our howler line into the zone just crushing them and all it takes is a failed clear by clifton a failed clear by howler puck gets cycled back down deep and i believe it goes stall from the right circle over to Fast on the left circle, who does not make a mistake here and finishes when he needs to finish. Now, there's, there's periods of this game where one team dominated, so I'm not going to say say that this is a, a universal statement. But if there's one difference in this series, both very defensive teams, very good at possession, very good at, at stifling chances, but when the Canes have a chance to finish, they get a goal. And when the Bruins have had a chance to finish, they get jack shit. So, there's your there's your analysis. Three minutes later, in Arizona, Pasta has it on the wall. And he braces for a hit from Slavin. And Slavin just goes right around, doesn't touch him, grabs the puck, and keeps moving. Pasta, take a hit to make a play, man. Take a hit to make a play. But instead, Slavin goes up and around our net, whips it to Tony D'Angelo. Couldn't happen for a nicer guy. And he shoots down Main Street, and it looks like Aho jumps 
and gets a tip on this. It was a little clever. It beats Olmark. I don't really blame Olmark for this one. He couldn't see shit. He had nine bodies in front of him, it looked like. And it was a tip from the slot. It's 2-0. Just like that. Just like that. If you give them any room to breathe, they score on you. That is a good team across the ice from us. Not as good as the Baston Bruins. I'm telling you that right now. Yeah. <sighs> Gotta believe. 2-0. Period's gonna end that way. We do have an actual chance or two because in the last 10 minutes of this game well last seven minutes of this game we've been getting obliterated late in the period about a buck 30 left with two chances mcavoy shoots it right in to kachekov's chest but he has a great chance from the right side open shot right into his chest and then lindholm another chance from that right side and he misses the net finishing one minute left bergeron's gonna go for slashing it's a three on two he knocks this is loose hands, man. I hate this shit. I get the broken stick rule where, like, you break a stick, it's a penalty. If you knock it out of their hands, hold on to the stick tighter, asshole. I don't know. You can hold sticks and pull them all day, but for some reason, you can't smack it out of someone's hands. I don't really get that. I've always hated that one. But it gets called every time. Bergeron's gonna go. Six seconds left. There's a scrum in front of Olmark. Penal a period expires. There's another scrum. Very, very chippy. But it's gonna end 2-0. We're going to start the second period. And some reason, the scrums at the end of the period, Carlo is going to go. He gets called for roughing during that end of the period scrum. But so is Howla. And on the Kane side, only Jarvis. We, now look, this game is not on the refs by any means. But any time there could be offsetting where the Canes instigated, there was offsetting. And any time they could add a little extra to the Bruins, they 100% did. They had nine power plays. They did not deserve nine power plays. I'm not, again, we didn't play well enough to win this game. But fuck, man, did the refs not really give us a chance to make any sort of comeback in this one. My God. I hate complaining about the refs. That's not what I like to do here. I've, I've told you guys a thousand times. But damn, was that rough. We kill the five on three. But as the second penalty is happening, Ajo is going to get a one-timer from across the slot. And he's going to beat Olmark. It's 3-0. And we're just a couple minutes into the second. But it's only 3-0. And it's 15, 16 minutes left of the period. There's like 18 at this time. Let's do it. Let's get in there. Four minutes in. Freddy is going to go for the most blatant fucking interference I've ever seen. Well, maybe not I've ever seen. Stupid-ass penalty, man. Just comes over, trucks the guy. Doesn't He doesn't have the puck. He's not near the play. Just trucks him. Stupid. Stupid. We're going back to the penalty kill. Thank God we kill it. Halfway through this period, pasta, back to the top line. Everyone else gets shuffled. 520 left. Hall, take it down. Power play. We get one. We actually get one. Pasta and Bergy win a board battle. Gets to Marshan, who whips it on net. Puck's bouncing. No one can control it. Gets kicked around a couple times. Bergeron is finally able to swoop in and swipe it around. Kochekov, it's 3-1. It's 3-1. And there's still a period and a quarter to play. You can still do this. And then the worst part of the game. And this is where I lost uh, some Twitter followers and some subscribers. So buckle up. The Svechnikov hit on Lindholm. Ripping the Band-Aid off. I don't think it was dirty. I just don't. And just hear me out on this. Hear me out. Lindholm never picks up his head. Ever. Through this whole circumstance. Sequence, I should say. Comes around the net. Svechnikov green little. And he goes right through him. To me... Now look, if you disagree with me, fine, fine. I'm not going to argue with you. This is what I saw and what I think. To me, shoulder was directly at the chest. Lindholm's head was down, and he took it a little bit to the chin. The follow-through, Sveshikov skates. Both of them don't leave the ice. One of them does. This was a huge, massive fucking hit. Open ice. But I think it was legal. What bothers me about this is they don't do the five minutes to review that because in the moment, it looks like he goes right through his head. 
They don't do it. They don't do the five minutes and drop it to two. They just go, no, it's fine. It looks like he goes right through his head at full speed. It really does. I, but hey, maybe I should just give credit to the refs for making the right call. I don't think it was an illegal hit. I don't think it was a dirty hit. I just don't. Looks to me like he was aiming for shoulder to chest, and Lindholm just had his head down. Lindholm is not doing okay. Those are the exact words that Cassidy used. Not sure if he's staying in Raleigh for the night at the hospital or if he's going to come back with them. I don't know. We're not sure. It's not a good situation. But yeah, I mean, look, if you want to tell me it's clearly a, a dirty hit, anything like that in the comments, it's fine. You can give your arguments. That's just the way I saw it. And some people really, really, really did not like that that was my opinion. What's even more frustrating is Carlo gets into a scrum after this hit with Svechnikov. And Carlo gets the extra two minutes. Because he instigated. Fuck's sake, man. What's even worse is like 15 seconds into the power play, power play, penalty kill, Marshand gets a shot off on Kachekov. Then he comes around and Kachekov's holding the puck. And he gives him a little shove in the back. He's outside the crease. All good. Kachekov stands up, taps him with the uh, with the blade of his stick, and Martian jabs him back. Martian, you just got the call. If you didn't jab back, you just offset that power play. But no, he does not do that. Gives him the hit back. They're going to be offsetting. And it gets worse during this power play. And this is something to highlight. Jarvis takes an open ice hit to make a play to Ajo for the breakaway. He takes a hit to make a play. Something that our best players aren't doing. Ajo gets the breakaway. Forbort wraps him up, holding 5v3 for a buck 05. 20 seconds left to the 5v3. Needy Rider with an awesome pass. It's a D'Angelo shot from the point, and he sees it coming. Instead, he tries of tipping it on net. He tips it across to Trocek. Trocek gets it in on Olmark. Olmark makes the initial save, but Needy Rider is there to poke it back in. That might go to Ajo. I'm not sure if that's finalized for Needy Rider, but I believe it's Needy Rider. That brings the score to 4 1. Still on the penalty kill for 50 seconds. We kill that off. Going into the third. Get a quick one, maybe? Man, no. Early in the period, Svetch goes knee on knee with uh, McAvoy. McAvoy skating forward. Svetch turns into him. Knee on knee. Both fall over. Max holding the knee. He does stay in the game, though. DeBrusque reacts and goes after Svetch. DeBrusque gets a cross-checking penalty. Now, yeah, he gave him a high shove there. Don't get me wrong. It's pretty weak, but shoot, they're going to call everything. 48 seconds left of it. Four more high-sticking blood. Four minutes. 5v3 for 48 seconds, and then a long-ass kill after that. Ah, <sighs> we do kill them both, though, which is very good. 11.33 left. Canes, too many men. We get the power play. I hate our power play so fucking much. Ugh, oh, it's just painful. 7.39 left. McAvoy, a really nice play to Bergeron for the tip-in in front of the net. It was weird. We put a guy in front of the rookie goaltender and got a chance... And tipped it past him for a goal. Putting a guy in front of a goaltender. Maybe maybe that's what we should be doing. Maybe that's the plan. Maybe that's a way to win a game or two. Is to put someone in front of the goaltender. Although I wouldn't say much about that this game. Because our forecheck was so constantly late to the action. That we never really had that much possession in their zone anyway. Other than the first period. 4-2. Four, Four minutes left. Marshand gets high sticked. We pull the goalie. It's six on four. You get a goal here, you really give yourself a chance at an upset. Just can't bury one. I just... Our power play completely let us down again. Again. This is this team is way too much talent to be bad at the power play. And you got to look at the coaching staff on this one. You can't look anywhere else. This is too much talent. You got to make a change. Do something. Nothing. Nita Ryder gets the empty netter. It's game. 5-2. We are now being outscored 26-4 to four through the season series. Does that make sense? We're somewhere around there. 26-4 to four or 5, something like that. Not great. Not great. But I'm going to talk about some positives in the game notes. First positive. Let's see what we got. Lindholm injury not doing well. That's not very positive. That's not very positive. No. He's not doing well. That injury would be massive. Riley slots back in. He's going to go with Carlo. Grizz will go with McAvoy. 
that's a huge loss. Man, Lindholm's just having a rough first year with the Bees, man. Another injury. I feel for the guy, and hopefully this isn't something we talk about two years from now. Or, well, Lindholm's never been the same since that hit. That's such a bummer, man. Such a bummer. Here's the thing, though. These next two games, we get second change in, in most scenarios. Our superstars need to be unlocked. The coaching staff has to find a way to get these lineups going to where our best players can be our best players. Now, the argument here is, doesn't matter who they should be going up against, they should still be our superstars. And I agree. But we got to get them rolling a little bit. There has to be some sort of momentum going into game five when this series is tied after the Bees win two games at home. Let's fucking go. Let's go. Again, no finish. But even if we did finish in this game, we lost. This was, we lost this game. We just full out lost it. This team has a ton of room to improve in a lot of ways. I don't know why that's a positive to me. That feels like a positive. Refs are completely lost in this game. They uh, they did a lot wrong. They I think they over-whistled in moments where you actually basically told one team, hey, after whistle stuff, it's always going to go your way. Always going to go your way. And so the instigation continued, and the retaliation continued, and the penalties kept racking up. They really lost control of this one. And again, I don't want to complain about the refs, but any chance, any chance there was a scrum after the whistle, it was our guy minimum. Minimum. Brutal. Lineup changes for game three. I think Swayman gets a start, even though I wouldn't put a lot of this game on Olmark, but I mean, he could he could have been better. Um, And Freddie, after the bad penalty, I don't think he's in this lineup. There might be a couple guys in the bottom six that see a seat, but... I don't think Freddy's in the lineup come uh, come game three. All right, guys, that does it for me. Like, comment, subscribe. I love this team. It's a very likable team. There's a lot of reason to like this team. I don't want to see it end like this. I don't think it will. I think we're going to put up a great fight at home. I think we're going to extend this series. And let's see what kind of damage we can do. Make this team earn it. Don't give this team some pluff first-round matchup. At very minimum, don't let them go into the second round being like, woo, breeze through that one. Fight for this. It's, it's 82 games that you played. 82. Don't let it just end after another four. I think this team's going to come out with real fire. I think we're going to see some great, great play game three. Let's go. Go Bees!